Welcome to the Authentic Dentist Podcast. Join Dr. Allison House of House Dental in Scottsdale and Sean Zayas, founder of Zana, a company helping dentists extend their care beyond the chair as they lead dentists deeper along the journey of authenticity to reach greater fulfillment in their professional lives and to deliver remarkable patient experiences. At the core of the Authentic Dentist is a belief that the answer to the current challenges in dentistry is dentists discovering that their greatest asset and point of differentiation is their personal brand and that forming that brand out of their authentic selves is the best strategy for success in dentistry today. Hey guys, this is Sean and Dr. Allison House with the Authentic Dentist Podcast. And uh, this is kind of like a continuation of our last episode on comparisons where we're gonna go a little deeper into what I think the antidote is, and that is getting really clear on how you define success because if you want to be an authentic dentist like dr allison house um i think it's so important to really hone in on what is success for you because dentistry has so many different paths that you can take um and just like we were talking about with comparisons if you see someone else and you see the glitz and the glamour but that's actually not the journey that you're going on. You might start drifting and feeling like, oh my gosh, am I completely missing it? Where you might be perfectly still aligned on what you what you value and what's successful to you. And, you know, like I was mentioning, for some of us, doing great dentistry and taking care of our patients and getting earning a living is enough. And it's more than enough. For other people, they need to either be at at the top or uh, innovating when it comes to what's going on clinically and and advancing clinical dentistry. Um, Other people might be writers or speakers and they need to be on the stage or being published in magazines because that's really what's also going to bring fulfillment. And being a great clinical dentist is not enough on, on their journey. And I think if you don't get clear about what you signed up for and I guess what you're evolving into because when you start off as a dentist, you don't know. You have no idea what you need or what you want. I'm still stuck on when you said I was the authentic dentist. I listen to this podcast every once in a while. I'm like, oh, she's so smart. I wish I could be like her in real life. <laughs> and I'm going to try, but it's it's tough just to be every day being authentic and who you want to be because you get pulled into all these other things. Wait, wait, wait. Before you go on, though, I love that because I'll listen to some of the content I create that inspires, you know, might inspire other people, again, to to innovate or step out and step up. And I listen to it and I'm like, oh, my gosh, like I'm sharing this with conviction because it's what I need to hear. Yeah, I say what I need to hear almost every time, hoping that this is what other people need to hear. But am I authentic every single moment of my life? No. I mean, I still get caught up in all the other, the glitz and lose sight of what's important. So I've talked before about the goal setting that we do every year. But part of the goal setting I've done several times and I'm going to do it again is looking at values. Brene Brown does a really good job of this where you get a a sheet and you narrow it down to 10 top values and then you narrow it down to three top values. And it's hard to do. And those three values tend to shift over time. In fact, the 10 values, but they are who you are. And that's really important to know. So there's, there's things about me and wealth is not the number one thing in my life. Clearly. I mean, if you look at my life, it's, it's not, I like to dress nice. Does she have a list of values? She's a list of values. Okay. So that's, and you can just go on her website and download it. It's really nice. What, What is it called? The values list. Just type in values list to Google (laughs) and you'll probably find it. Value list, Brene Brown. So you you narrow it down and you can just see what's important to you. And then you can look at, once you decide that, you can figure out what's, what fulfills you versus what doesn't fulfill you. So my three top values are altruism, achievement, and beauty, which are weird. I mean, they're just a weird group of values. But I find that when I start trying to live for money or something else, um, Achievement does have some power in it, but if I try and live for power, it doesn't work. Like I'm unhappy. I'm unhappy in my work. So I have to keep coming back to, okay, what does achievement mean to me? And 
How is that making me feel good? And for me, achievement is when I finish a case, all of the margins are right, the patient's happy, then I feel like this huge achievement, like a check. Good job, Allison. Add a girl. I don't need anybody else to say it. I love it. That's not the same as I'm crushing it. My practice is making 3.2 million. You know, it's, it's not the same at all. And so it's important to recognize that I feel more fulfilled by that. Now, that doesn't mean I, I don't need to make money. I don't, I need to pay my team. There's bills. But if I'm looking for what fulfills me, it tends to be achievement and beauty. You know, when I do something beautiful, that makes me feel good. Now you're 25 plus years in dentistry. Oh, I was like, I'm 25. No, I'm 50. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm 23 years into dentistry. Yeah. Okay. Now, three years into dentistry, um, Allison probably didn't have the clarity on this. Um, when did you start getting more clarity? Because I feel like maybe the last two, three years, I'm starting to understand more of who I am in, in the business space. I think it is an evolution. I mean, I didn't know who I was at 25 and I didn't have the skills that I have today to even look at it. I, I've talked about this before too, that I, I'm a smart person, but I wasn't great with my hands and I didn't have any people skills. And so those are things I've developed over time. And so some people think that those two things are my best things. They're still not. I still, that intelligence piece is, is seeing the whole picture piece is the piece that's really me. And so incorporating all the things I've learned and then who I am, that's, that's when I feel the most authentic is when I'm, I'm working in that space. And I, I wonder if like time-wise, like, you know, I, I'm always fascinated by like the stages of growth where again, everyone starts by like modeling because you, you just see someone else and you're like, oh, let's see if I can, I can do that too. You know, can I, can I learn from the, the mentor or the expert? And then at some point you get proficient enough to go, um, like what, in this mastery, what part of this is me or am I good at, or do I really like, and that's where people can like start specializing more or less or saying, okay, these are the cases that I like. Or what you don't like. Right. There's Which, definitely things I don't like. I just don't do. And I think that's just as important. And to identify that on like a clinical side is important, but to identify that just when it comes to a fulfillment, achievement, success, like definitions of success are just as important. Because if you live someone else's life and, you know, you, you see the person that's, you know, speaking at Chicago midwinter and, and uh, the greater New York meeting. And it's okay to want to be like that person. But the thing is, you don't know what closed doors, what they're like behind closed doors. I mean, they may be on marriage number four. They may be an alcoholic. You, you don't know everyone's story. You can only see what they show you. And so you, you have to decide who you are for you and what you want your life to look like. But I'm just saying there's also a chance that like it would never light you up anyway. Like you could get booked to the same exact things. You could end up having that person's life and just not enjoying it. And yet they might be cut from that cloth where they absolutely love it. Yeah, their value system is different and there's nothing wrong with that. It would be weird if we were all the same. In fact, patients wouldn't like that. They need to have that choice of different people, different dentists, different doctors to pick from. Okay, so what what comes as a surprise now that you know what you know about where you're at right now? Um, if you had a conversation with, you know, early Allison, graduate dental school, you're starting out, and you know she's probably confident and kind of has this maybe idealistic, like, oh yeah, I don't know, like not in a bad way, but what would have come as a surprise to her that now is is very obvious to you about? what makes you come alive or what brings fulfillment? Like what maybe were you not expecting? Oh, I think I thought by the time I'm 30, which is so old, by the time I'm 30, I'm going to know everything. I'm going to know exactly who I am. I'm going to know exactly what I want in life. And here I am approaching 50 and I can say that I still don't know. Um, and it still evolves. Like there's things that I didn't like to do in my thirties that I'm doing now that I didn't like, but because the technology has come so far, I like, I love my Sarek machine. I hated it in my thirties. It didn't produce what I wanted it to produce. So there's a shift in technology. There's a shift in who I am. I find that connection is more important to me now with patients. Whereas when I was younger, I, I was just working on proficiency, the achievement piece. But now I really, I really like to talk to patients. And I think that's part of why I am not as happy in my practice because there are so many patients and we're so busy that I'm not getting that connection. 
And that just feels like burnout. Like I'm not enjoying it. And I know you like connection too, and yet you work alone. So it's, yeah, it's finding that balance. Where, where do you get connection? Where do you, where do you get all the things that you need professionally and personally? Well, and that's been part of, I know we talked about personality um, tests in one of the last episodes. Um, and I think that's where the journey of just even self-discovery for me, um, it's just been fascinating because when I started out working for my dad and doing sales, it's like, okay, yeah, I can communicate with people. Um, I can do that at, at, a, at a fairly high level, but I didn't know I was a creative at all. Like I never, if someone was like, oh yeah, you're a creative. I would have been like, why, like, <laughs> what, why would you say that? Like, what makes you think I'm a creative? Um, and it was just a few years ago when my sister's like, Sean, you're an artist. Like, look at what you do in so many areas with whether you're, you know, when you craft with, with wood, um, or you make beautiful brands, like there's artistry in that. And it actually helped having some sense of like, oh, I can own that. Like I'm, I'm an artist and I like creating my art alone. And sales don't fill you up. You don't love that. But, but here's the tension. It's like, I love creating art alone, but I love leading and connecting and being part of a collaboration. And if I'm in one of those modes, um, if I'm like in that creative mode and I'm around people, I'm annoyed because I can't create around people. And if I'm in that mode of wanting to, you know, lead and collaborate and do things in teamwork and I'm by myself, I feel like miserable because <laughs> I need connection. So it's like, I'm constantly going back and forth between these two modes. Um, and I didn't know that. And for the longest time, I'm like, why am I so discouraged right now? Why? Like, so I, I think it's just really helpful um, to see people that are in their, their gifting or shining that unique light that only they can shine and appreciating them, but being like, Hey, that's, that's not me. And I like that they're bringing this excellence to dentistry or you're saying it so well, the, the thing is we expect all the models to look the same. And a lot of people will diss the DSOs. They're not okay. But there are so many people that love to work like that. They love the excitement. They love to jump from room to room. They, they thrive on it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Whereas I don't like to do that. Kind of what you're talking about. I'm in this tooth. I'm, I'm working so hard. And then the hygienist calls me and there's a phone call and, and you're interrupting me. <laughs> you're interrupting my creative process. And I don't like that. But that is dentistry. So being in, in a certain model makes me miserable. Being in a different model would make me miserable. It's kind of you have to find that model that works for you, that you find fulfilling, and that you can still be profitable with. But yet as a young dentist, I'm sure... You don't even know what that is. No, so you <laughs> that think, means you're thinking, well, these people are saying this is the most uh, profitable model and this is the most um, safe model maybe. And this is what's trending. And there's all these different criteria on which you're evaluating what type of dentistry is going to allow you to pay the bills. <laughs> Look at your significant other and not feel like a failure um, because you have all this debt. And yet the reality is you don't know what you don't know yet. Um, you find that out in the journey. Um, but also just, and that's the important piece though. You have to figure it out. So if you go into a practice model that you hate, it may not be that you hate dentistry. It may be that this is just not the right model for you, but you don't know that until you do it. So you have to jump in and figure it out. Thank you for listening to the authentic dentist podcast to join Allison and Sean on this journey. Hit the subscribe button to never miss an episode. Here's to your success. Express yourself fully. Live authentic.